How's it going, Optic Nation? Diesel here, and today I've got a little jungle S and D for you guys. And uh, this map is—I uh, don't know—I'm kind of—I haven't really decided if I really like this map or I don't. I'm kind of indifferent right now. But uh, the first video I gave you guys was my favorite uh, submachine gun, which was the MPL. And today I'm going to show you my favorite assault rifle, which is the Galil. And I have a suppressor slapped on this bad boy. And uh, this thing does some work in some S&D. It's got a uh, good range still. It's not too crippled by the suppressor, so you can still get your long range shots. And this guy uh, sniped the crap out of me. And I didn't show you guys, because I don't like seeing myself die. No, I just edited the clip a little too soon. I've left it in there for purposes. But, so this is the second round. We won the first round. And uh, in this video, I'm also going to show you, I believe it's round three, uh, what not to do when uh, trying to get a gameplay and whatnot. And right here you saw me getting shot, and I must say one thing I learned from playing Halo Reach is when I started getting shot in Halo Reach, everybody told me you need to just run away, because that's how you play Halo, and I never used to do that in Call of Duty. I would always just still push, and it usually worked out for me pretty well. But in this, after I am playing Reach for, I guess it was the month and a half I played it prior to Black Ops coming out, I learned to do that a little bit more, and uh, it works out. So that's a little tip I could give you guys if you are looking for some, is if you're getting shot, definitely don't hang out in the same spot. You need to get out of there as quickly as possible. Obviously, don't really turn your back unless you know you're in total cover like I was right there. The guy, you know, wasn't poking around. He could have if he pushed me, but I had to take my chances, and I had that other guy with me as well, so it kind of just worked out. But my kill streaks for this, what do I have? I believe for search and destroy, what I like to use is the uh, I use the UAV, I use mortar team, and I believe it's care package is my other one. I not sure. I sometimes run the UAV mortar team and attack helicopter, which now that I'm thinking back, I think I have on this game. But yes, I'm confusing myself because I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, up here is a good vantage point, especially if you have uh, Lightweight Pro, which means all your jump damage, which I don't have yet because this is still earlier in the game. It's uh, a good point because you could jump off there and not take any fall damage. You're going to see one dude, I believe it's this round, uh, makes a, a pretty easy shot and a pretty funny shot for me. I was cracking up when I saw him just ready. Uh, let's ca count it down. I believe it's three, two, nope. I was wrong. Uh, it's coming. Wait for it. There he is. Swan diving and assisted suicide. Lovely. I was cracking up. That was It was pretty funny to watch in real time. And yes, I have mortar teams, so so far so good. And obviously, since I didn't get a care package at five, I have my attack helicopter going. Um, I just like for this, I don't like to use the higher kill streaks or anything that I have to personally maneuver like the RC car I don't like anything like that because it just leaves you in a vulnerable position in S&D and, and uh, as we all know you only have one life so if somebody's smart I mean what I usually do is if I see an R if I hear an RC car whizzing by me and it doesn't see me I'm going to push exactly where that car just came from because there's going to be some dude laying on the ground with his RC controller in his hands and it's an easy kill so these guys are not paying attention and this is the round that I told you this is what you're not going to want to do when you're playing S&D. I got cocky in uh, this moment. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. I believe it's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I wasn't sure if I was going to kill another person before I planned this thing. And uh, I got cocky and arrogant thinking, you know, I was going to just push the shit out of this guy because I had a good gameplay going. And I completely failed because I was trying to get a video when that's what you don't want to do. Um, one thing people ask is how do you get good videos and this and that. And what you need to do is just play your game and not try to get a video. Just record and whatever happens, happens. Don't try to, to push. Here I just missed my shots and I had enough shots in my gun. I try to get up, pistol the shit out of the guy and he kills me. And right there could have made uh, this video if it just played out the rest of the way it did. A 16-1 video, instead I get 
two kills, and you'll see how many kills I get in the last uh, <clears throat> two rounds. But one thing I like about S&D in this game is they have a lethal grenade timer, so you can't just pre-nade. Uh, also, you can't kill your, uh, call your kill streaks in too soon. Uh, also, the grenade launcher, it's got a not only an S&D, but the grenade launcher has a, a timer as well where you can't launch grenades into spawn. So they did a real good job with all of that, putting thought and pretty much all the frustrating things that we found in Modern Warfare 2, they took them out. So I'm really liking that, and uh, I'm really just enjoying this game in general. I, every game mode, like the wager matches are fun, the campaign mode was fun, although I haven't finished it yet, I've only gotten so far. Uh, but just been too busy playing. I've already prestiged once, which I haven't done since Call of Duty 4. Um, in Modern Warfare 2, I got the 10th prestige hack. Oh no, we got the 10th prestige hack. Oh well, that game's over. I sold it. I don't own it anymore. So, get over it. And uh, But yeah, I mean, I haven't really prestiged. I've never seen a reason to, but this game, I don't know, it's just... It's just fun for me, which I haven't really had too much fun playing a game in a while. I go and play games by myself now. Usually I couldn't play Modern Warfare 2 unless I had a group of people playing with me or GBs. And uh, that's one thing that I'm really glad about is GBs are amazing in this game. They're they're fun, they're balanced, they're, uh, they're pretty action-packed for the most part. I mean, this game seems like it was built primarily around like a competitive environment, which is uh, a main reason that MLG, as far as we know, is going to be picking this up for the pro circuit, which means that you're going to be able to go to events. I know they usually hold them. This past year they had them in, shit, I can't even remember, Dallas, Orlando, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. They had some in Denver. They had them all over the place. So you're going to get a chance to see all your favorite optic guys. We're going to be out and about at all these events and you guys can play as well, obviously, so it's good for everybody. But this has been Diesel. This gameplay is over 15-2 S&D on Jungle. I'm out.